Hey fellow gliders, it's me and today we are going to learn how to create a better, leaner trebuchet method. Now if you're not familiar with the trebuchet method, feel free to go ahead and take a look at this video over here where I explain the trebuchet method in glide. Really it's just a way to turn an inline list into a multiple selection tool so that way you can select multiple items at once and send them someplace somewhere else. Now the method that it was currently used is pretty complicated. It involves like 11 columns and a couple of complex multi-step actions. Um, we've actually come up with a much leaner approach and this is what this video is all about. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing here is the app setup. Um, for this app, I have it just very simple, three tabs. We have a user sheet, which is gonna house all of our user profile data. We have an items sheet, and this is gonna be the list of items that our users are gonna be able to select and form a group of these items, and they're gonna save these group of items into the groups sheet. So then in our user profile, we have a name, email, photo, fine. And then the magic here is that we have this temporary column called a new session ID. Now I made this a user specific column. It doesn't need to be, it could just live inside of your Google sheet, which is fine. But if you make it a user specific column, it's much more responsive. Okay, from here, I have a relation of this new session ID to the items sheet where I have a temp session column. Again, this temp session column needs to be user specific because there's no user specific data as part of this list of items. So I have a temporary session ID column. And the purpose of this is to write our generated new session ID value into this column to make matches. So for example, if I write the value of one into this new session ID, eventually what we wanna do is write that same value of one into this column to make the match between our current session and the session ID. All right, from here, our new session ID, we, this is the relation where we're relating this column to the items temporary session column, which I just showed you. And then a, a join list of the row ID for that relation. And so ultimately this is gonna end up with a comma separated list of row IDs of the items that I selected. All right, in the items sheet, I also have a template column, which is just grabbing the user profile email column to generate the email address of the person who's currently signed in. And then I have a relation back to the current user. Um, you don't necessarily need this, but it's nice to have in the future, just in case you need to leverage sending any values from this sheet over to the user profile sheet. Okay, and then lastly, just to make some visual indication that yes, the items that we've selected have made matches, is I have an if then else column called if selected, which has the following logic. Okay, if the user profile, new session ID, which will be randomly generated, if it matches any of the values inside of Oh, first, if that value is empty, meaning we haven't generated one yet, that means that we must not have made any selections yet, so we'll have an empty box here. Uh, it could also just be, you know, leave it blank, but I have a gray box instead. Okay, next, if the temporary session ID, which is this column here, if it matches our user profile new session ID, that means that we selected that item, it made the match. And so um, we're gonna show a green emoji or the word selected or something like that. Okay, else, we must not have selected it. So again, you can leave it blank or a gray square emoji. And the result is this, right? So because one matches one, we see that there's green boxes. All right, if I put anything else besides one, you see it doesn't make a match. All right, and again, I'm relating this number to anything that matches in here to generate a list of session ID, uh, a list of items, and then the row IDs for those items here. Okay, my last table is a groups table where I'm gonna record just the selection that the user made. So we have a timestamp, the user email address, the comma separated list of item IDs. So we're gonna take this column here in our user profile sheet and send it to these item IDs I've then split this column and then related it back, related the split items back to the items row ID. 
I made it match. Um, so then that way we could take this split item uh, array of row IDs and relate it back to the item's row ID. So that way we can display our group in an inline list. All right, so here's the action sequence. So first thing is I have a profile tab. This works much easier when you're building out the functionality already on the user sheet. If you don't build it out on the user sheet, then you're gonna have to create this sequence of the template of current user and a relation back to the current user. So then that way when um, you generate the session ID, you'll generate it through this relation so that it ends up in the new session ID cell here for your row. But again, you can bypass all that if you just start on the user profile sheet, which I'm currently doing. All right, then we're gonna create a button and this button's gonna do two things. It's going to generate a new session ID and then display a list of the items that we want to select. So we can call this um, create group, a new group. And it's gonna have two actions. So we need to make it a multi-step action. Okay, the first action is going to be a set column where we're gonna set in this item in the user profile sheet, a new session ID. So for new session ID, we'll hit the triple dots and then choose the unique identifier, which will then generate a random string of characters. Again, if we're not on the user profile sheet, you'll still do this, but you won't be on this item. You'll have to choose a relation to current user in order to make that happen. Okay, next, we're gonna show a new screen. And this new screen is going to be our selection screen. So we'll call it select items. And our data, we wanna still live on our user profile row. So for the data, we're gonna choose this item, which means the row that we're currently on, which happens to be our user profile row. All right, for action name, we'll, we'll, we'll show this as a show select item screen, save. All right, so now when I create a new group, we'll see that this one gets replaced with a new value. All right, so now that one turned into a new random ID. And because this random ID, does not match anything in here, we see that we don't have a relation nor a join list, which also means that we haven't selected anything yet because again, this does not match this. All right, so then on this screen, we wanna make the selection happen. So we're gonna show an inline list and we're gonna show an inline list of the items that we want to select. So in this case, the values will be items. And we can show it as a list like this. Sometimes I like to show it as a compact list where we have the image, the name, and then under details, we have uh, the icon like so. If you want it to be more visual, you can select maybe tiles view. We can do maybe three across like that. Uh, you can maybe do an overlay. That works too. So then as they select things, that gray checkbox will turn into a green checkbox. All right, now the default value for selecting any of these things, the default action is to visit the detail screen for that item. We don't want that. We want to be able to add this item to our selection. So we just need to create a custom action on this inline list. So I'll select it, scroll down, and under action, instead of show detail for this item, we are going to create a new action. And if you're familiar with the trebuchet method or have watched any of my videos on the trebuchet method, you notice that this specific action was pretty complicated. We had uh, two different conditions and under each condition we had three set column values. It was pretty complicated. But this is actually gonna be much leaner. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is check to see if we've already selected this item for our group. So we're gonna add a condition and we're gonna check to see if our user profile session ID Okay, if it does not match the session ID for that item, that means we haven't selected it yet. We could also do um, if the icon is gray, right? Um, but I don't want to leverage, I don't want to lean on that just in case I want to change it later. Okay, so if our user profile, new session ID is not, then for the item, the temporary session ID, that means we haven't selected it yet, so we're going to select it. So we're going to do a set column 
And for this item, which is their, our uh, item selection, we're gonna set the temporary session ID to be our user profile new session ID, which is that generated ID. And that's it. Okay, next, if we have selected it already, that's the else condition, that means we wanna clear the selection. So we can do one of two things. Um, we can either generate a new ID for that column or we can just clear it all together, which I think will be easier. So we'll just do a set column. And for this row, we'll clear the temp session ID for that item. So we'll just do clear value, easy. All right, so this will be add, remove, item, save. All right, so if we did this correctly, as we check or click on these things, this should turn green and it should add it to our relation. Just like that, pretty neat, right? So eagle, spider, bear. We see that it matches in our users, eagle, spider, bear, because this session ID matches the session IDs we just wrote as part of that action. And we have the relations here and then a comma separated list of the item IDs for these items. All right, then lastly here, we want to send our selection to the groups sheet. So we need a button to do that. Button, and we'll say create group or add items to group. All right, now we only want this button to appear once they've made a selection. So if they haven't made a selection yet, we don't want to show anything. So for this add items to group, we'll set a visibility condition on it to only display when that relation took place, right? So our rel relation to session ID items, it needs to be not empty, meaning we need to have found some matches in here for it to display, All right? If we don't have any relation, then we see the button goes away. Perfect. Uh, if you wanna do some more smoke and mirrors, we can duplicate the button and make it transparent and reverse the logic to where it is empty. But then under the action, we just show a notification where uh, we say something like you must, or select an item first. So then that way, if they click on this button, they know to select an item first and nothing's gonna happen. All right, so let's select a couple items. Now this add items to group, this button here is where we're gonna add the row to our groups sheet and then do a couple of other things as well. So we're gonna make this a custom action. All right, so the first thing we will show notification to say uh, group created. Uh, we can have some auditory feedback with the play sound. We'll go back a screen. And then we'll add the row to our group sheet. So we're gonna do add row to our group sheet. We'll just fill in the data. So date will be our current date and time. User will be the person who's using the app. Item IDs will be our user profile join list of that relation. And then lastly, we want to reset our session ID to kind of clear our sections. So we'll do a set column in this row, which is still our user profile row. And for the new session ID, we'll just generate a new ID to kind of clear that relation. Um, you kind of want to avoid doing this clear value, even though you'd think that would work, and I'll show you why it doesn't. So here, we'll do a unique identifier, and then for the action name, we'll say uh, add new group. All right, so the reason why clearing the value doesn't work is because, as you see here, these users don't have a session ID yet. So if we were to clear it, you see it's still gonna make a match to, um, to something where that something is anything that hasn't been written in yet. So the blank matches a blank, which will then, which, which will then generate a relation which makes the app think that you've already selected things. So if you just generate a new session ID upon submitting the row, then it kind of clears your relation. All right, so we did this correctly. We can add items to group, just like that. And now we should see we have a group with our list of item IDs and the relations back to them. And now we can display these relation or this relation in an inline list. So on our profile tab, I've already have an inline list of our groups sorted by date created. 
Um, clicking on this, we see that I have an inline list. This inline list is of that relation of item IDs, which is in our groups rel item IDs. And it has the list of items that we've created. And then on here, this will be the detail screen for the item itself, which is exactly what we want. All right, so let's create a new group. Let's do uh, spider, bear, snake. Add items to group. We have a new group, spider, bear, snake. All right. So yes, a much more efficient, leaner trebuchet method to do multi-selection in your app. All right, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.